Which, in the name of Satan's favourite hat, is the better Judas Priest album? Could it be 2018's Firepower or the band's latest record, Invincible Shield? I'm going to let the two records fight it out across 13 rounds, during each of which we will compare the two albums in a different way. And of course, at the end, I want you to get down in comments and give me your thoughts and opinions and tell me how much you agree with the outcome. So jumping straight in, we're going to compare the album titles. Which is the best, Firepower or Invincible Shield? Now, I must admit, I found this a little bit harder than I expected, because I love the album title, Invincible Shield. I was delighted when it was announced, and I still absolutely love it. I think it's one of the best Judas Priest album titles. And yet, Firepower, there's something really um, compact and, yes, powerful about the name Firepower, isn't there? Firepower is just a great name for a record, whereas Invincible Shield is kind of a bit grander, still sounds tough, but it's got more syllables. Firepower has got three. Invincible Shield has more. Not that it's all about syllables, otherwise the best album title ever would just be Ni. We can't have that, can we? But you know what? I actually think that Firepower just nudges it past the post just a touch more than Invincible Shield. I think they're both great album titles, but I actually think, and I'm kind of surprising myself with this, that Firepower has a slightly better title. Yes! On to round two we go, where we will compare the album covers next. Now, this should be an interesting one. The Invincible Shield album cover has attracted... I think undue criticism. Well, a few people seem to really dislike it. I can understand why in the sense that there's not too much going on in it. It's kind of just a picture of a shield, but I love the colours of uh, the shield and I think the composition of it is great and it's really eye-catching and kind of delightfully lurid, I suppose you might call it. Very bright and full of character. The Firepower album cover, meanwhile, is kind of a more of a traditional uh, priest cover. It very much recalls the covers of Screaming for Vengeance and Defenders of the Faith. And I'm guessing that was a, a statement of intent, wasn't it? Because I think with Firepower, Priest really wanted to say, you know what, this is our real comeback album since Rob came back. And it absolutely was, wasn't it? So which one is the best? I honestly love both. I think they're both great. But Firepower pips Invincible Shield to the post because I think it's more dynamic. Great big laser cannons being fired and you get the sense that something is happening. Whereas Invincible Shield is kind of a shield that looks like it's on fire or being covered with lava or whatever is going on there. But Firepower feels more dynamic. And so that's why it gets the point, which means that Firepower is 2-0 in the lead as we go in to round three. Production quality. Now, Firepower was co-produced by Tom Allom and Andy Sneap, the veteran metal producer who's made a huge name for himself in metal production circles, as well as playing guitar for Priest live. Andy Sneap gets sole production credit, as far as I'm aware, for Invincible Shield. So purely in terms of production quality, which is the best? Well, as I'm sure you'll agree, Firepower has an amazing production. It's really clear, just super clear. Now that we have Invincible Shield, I feel a little bit like Firepower just sounds ever so slightly, not sterile, sterile is not the word because it doesn't sound overly produced or anything like that. And it's got, the guitars have got a lovely warmth and crunch and depth to them, which Andy seems to really be gifted with in terms of production. But what Invincible Shield does have more of is texture. And obviously it's kind of a little bit hard to separate this from songwriting, but I feel that there's more depth to this production and it's possibly because Everyone's learnt more, I guess, but also because this album had more time devoted to it thanks to world events. There's always a silver lining. I also think that Invincible Shield has slightly more of a live feel. Yeah, Firepower isn't sterile, but it does sound quite controlled, I think. Whereas Invincible Shield, I love any metal song that sounds like it's about to go off the rails. And there's certain points where, you know, the songs of Invincible Shield, like uh, The Serpent and the King or the, t the amazing title track, kind of sound like that. I mentioned in my deep dive review video of the album, which I'll link to at the end of this video, that verse three in Invincible Shield, when the guitar comes in by itself and Rob sings over it with the drum stabs, I just think that's just mwah, absolute metal chef's kiss. So I think Invincible Shield takes its first point of the match, which takes us to 2-1 in Firepower's favour as we move into round four. And I'm so excited, I must have a sip of tea. Oh, that's better. That'll keep me going. Now, this is an interesting one because Priest are really strong on their song titles and uh, Firepower has some great ones. Again, Firepower is a great title full stop for an album and the opening track. Lightning Strike is a great title. Uh, Evil Never Dies is great. Slightly, um, I wouldn't say overdone, but Overkill did use it in 1989 on the Years of Decay record. Never the Heroes, I'm not so keen on that one, actually, as a song particularly or as a title. Necromancer. Oh, I love a bit of necromancy, don't you? 
uh, Children of the Sun. That's a kind of a bit of a generic kind of trad metal type of title. Children of the hmm, Guardians. Rising from Ruins. Oh, that's a great song as well. Great title. Flamethrower is pretty cool. Spectre is a classic Judas Priest title. Traitor's Gate is a great title. No Surrender is a brilliant title. Lone Wolf. It's a bit of a different one, that, isn't it? All round, as a song and as a title. Sea of Red is a good title. And then on the Invincible Shield record, I don't have a physical copy yet. Incidentally, I still haven't heard the three extra tracks on the deluxe edition, so I'm really excited about that. And when I do hear them, I'll probably make a video about them, or maybe a live stream or something. Who's up for a Possessed by Metal live stream? We haven't really done much of that. So let's see the song titles of this Invincible Shield album. Panic Attack, that's a good, good title. The Serpent and the King, I've never been crazy about, and I'm still not crazy about not nearly as much as I'm crazy about the song itself anyway Invincible Shield is a great title I love it Devil in the Skies is a bit generic isn't it yeah Elvis Presley had a song called Devil in the Skies for a start Gates of Hell I love that Crown of Horns I, I think I said before in my review of Crown of Horns it's a bit of an odd title because it kind of seems like a kind of a play on words almost like a humorous title and that yet the song is sincere so I don't know as God is my witness I love that title Trial by Fire is a bit generic for my taste. Testament were doing that in 1988. Escape from Reality, um, not a great title. I like the song, not a great title. Sons of Thunder is a great title. It's really strong, isn't it? Because of the way the words sound. Sons of Thunder. And one of my favourite songs on the record. And then we have Giants in the Sky. I think that's a good title. It's a really good image, you know, especially as it's um, a song that's kind of about Ronnie James Dio and Lemmy and these fallen heroes. It's a great way to think of them being giants in the sky. You know, just by a nose, I think the titles of Firepower, Necromancer, Firepower, Lightning Strike, Spectre, Traitor's Gate, I think they just take it just a little bit. This means that the score is now 3-1 to Firepower as we move into round five, which is the promo videos of the record. Now, I'm not going to hold you in too much suspense on this one, because I think, if I'm honest, that the promo videos for Firepower were superior to the Invincible Shield ones that we've had. I mean, it's great to have videos, and I think we've had lyric videos for each of the, the lead singles as well. But Lightning Strike had a great video. It's the band on a stage, together, playing together, and that's kind of unbeatable. I totally understand that circumstances and, and probably world events, and also the fact that the band live in different places around the world, make it really difficult to make promo videos where they're all on a stage together anymore. And so that, while that's understandable, I think the fact that Firepower had a lead single with, you know, what you might call a proper promo video, not something that's kind of cut together. All the band members standing individually in the woods, as was the case with Trial by Fire, means that Firepower just had better videos. You know, the reasons are understandable, but the facts are undeniable. It's another point to Firepower. Oh my good God, that means that Firepower is leading four points to one as we enter round six. And this round is a tricky one, the opening track. So that means it's Firepower versus Panic Attack. Now this really is tricky because there are different ways to look at this. Now when I'm listening to Amazon Music on my headphones walking along the seafront, I live in Brighton in the UK by the way, and I love to listen to music as I'm strolling along the seafront every morning, and I kind of favour tracks that just start straight away. I don't want prolonged intros, I want something that, you know, is going to rock immediately. So on that basis, uh, Firepower is much better because it just comes straight in with a riff and gets on with it, whereas Panic Attack has a much more elaborate opening, tinged with progressive rock. So, does that mean that Firepower is a better opening track than Panic Attack? I don't think it does, because I'm thinking about it in that specific walking along the seafront, wanting the song to start straight away kind of fashion. But really, when you compare the songs, I think Panic Attack has more going on, really, and it's more intense overall, even though the chorus of Firepower is really intense. And actually, when I replayed the album yesterday, I was kind of reminded of how intense Firepower is as a track. They're both fantastic opening tracks, but the point goes to Panic Attack. I'd be very interested to hear what you think about this in comments. I mean, all of these points, I want to hear your opinion, but this one in particular, it could be a bit of a battle, I think, in the comments. So, Firepower has four points, Invincible Shield has two, as we move on to vocal performances in round seven. One of the great tragedies of this world is that Rob Halford hates the sound of his own voice. I had either never known this or I'd forgotten about this until Rob said it, I think, in his really good interview with the Metal Pilgrim channel. Yeah, I can't stand the sound of my voice. I just... I just cannot get into a place of peace with it. I'm just always struggling to 
accept that this is the best I can do. You absolutely must subscribe to Metal Pilgrim if you haven't already, and also to my very favourite metal YouTube channel, which is... Welcome to Thralls of Metal. How can the man with the finest metal voice on the planet hate his own voice? It's just not fair. It's terrible. But then again, maybe... The fact that he hates it and he just constantly strives to improve himself makes him so good. Oh, what a head wrecker that is. So on which album is Rob's vocal performance the best? It's got to be Invincible Shield. I can't even think about that, really. You know, his vocals are great on Firepower. Absolutely great. But I think he probably shows an even greater range on Invincible Shield and also kind of conveys more kind of heartfelt emotion on tracks like Crown of Horns and intensity on the serpent and the king i mean jesus he hasn't screamed like that throughout a song for a while has he yeah invincible shield gets the point which means that firepower has four points and invincible shield is catching up with three as we move to round eight this round is about the consistency of the songs essentially how many songs on each record would i be likely to skip while i'm walking along the seafront of a morning starting with firepower there are a couple that spring to mind, actually, and I hate to say it because, you know, Judas Priest are my favourite metal band. But, you know, there are 14 tracks on the album, so it'd be pretty amazing if I absolutely loved them all. Children of the Sun, I've always found to be a bit uh, ploddy in a kind of trad metal kind of way. You know, trad metal kind of not in such a great way. It's, it's not a terrible song, but it's not my kind of thing. It's not the kind of intensity that I want from Priest. Uh, sea of Red, the closing track, I'm not a huge fan of that. Technically, it's a great song. You know, it's a really good song. It's really memorable and epic and also atmospheric. But it's just not the kind of thing that I want to be listening to. <laughs> really? I don't like slow songs all that much. Isn't that terrible? I'm basically 12. Depending on how I'm feeling on any given day, I might skip Lone Wolf. Uh, but I do think, again, it's a really good, really strong, really doomy kind of track. Never the Heroes, I've never been a huge fan of, so I might skip that as well. So if I'm in a particularly impatient mood walking along the seafront one morning, I might skip four tracks out of the full 14 that are on Firepower. That's not a bad average, actually. You know, 10 amazing tracks that I totally want to listen to. And then out of Invincible Shield's 11 songs, remember we're talking about the standard edition of this record, not the deluxe version, which I haven't actually heard yet at the time of recording this. I wouldn't skip a single track on it. So uh, I think Invincible Shield gets the point, right? Yes. So that takes us to four all as we go into round nine. So this one's about the songwriting. Which album has the best songwriting? Which is a really interesting thing to look at. Again, I'm not going to build up fake suspense on this one. It's Invincible Shield has the best songwriting. I think for so many reasons. The band spent more time on this record and it really shows. And they also just lavished so much attention on it. There's so much attention to detail. I go in depth on some of this stuff in my deep dive review of the album. The layers of melody, both vocal and guitar, are just glorious. But at the same time, as Rob has noted himself, it doesn't feel like they were overthinking the whole thing, which is such a delicate balance to strike. They didn't overthink it, but at the same time, they put a hell of a lot of work into it, and the results are there for everybody to see. And you know, also, it's taken me a while to realise that since Rob came back to the band, the, the band haven't really done many fast songs. I mean, obviously, Firepower is kind of a fast song. The chorus is really fast, isn't it? It's almost like a thrash beat. But... Songs like Panic Attack and The Serpent and the King and Invincible Shield, you know, the terrible trio, and obviously I mean terrible in a great way, that open the album are all just blasters that are just up-tempo, you know, like the band used to make. And the band haven't really done that since they came back with Angel of Retribution. There were some great kind of heavy mid pace songs on that record, like Demonizer and Hellrider, obviously, love both of those. But speeders fast songs have been hard to come by and so it's just great that the band have just encompassed everything that the band has been about throughout its 50-year career and for that reason you know that's why invincible shield very much gets the point so that finally puts invincible shield into the lead at five points to firepower's four as we move into round 10 ding and furthermore ding round 10 concerns the number and quality of killer riffs now i really wanted to actually count the number of killer riffs on each record i've run out of time on that i do apologize <laughs> i have children i have twins what do you want from me
<laughs> but if anyone wants to count the number of killer riffs on each album, then I would love to hear from you in comments. Oh, yes. So I'm going to go with Instinct on this one. And Firepower has loads of killer riffs. There's no doubt about it. Traitor's Gate, Necromancer, the, the opening riff of that. Um, Evil Never Dies, the main riff of that is really heavy. And it kind of reminds me of uh, Rob's Fight period. You know, the War of Words album, if Evil Never Dies. And Fight had some great riffs, great simple fantastic riffs yeah in, but invincible shield seems to have just riffs flying out of every orifice quite frankly uh that doesn't make it sound great but it is great and you just feel like the band just had an abundance of creativity going on you know they, they introduce a, a riff for just a moment and then kind of throw it away you know that's how many riffs and ideas they have on this record so yeah i'm pretty sure that invincible shield has more killer riffs than firepower so that puts invincible shield further into the lead at six points to four we move on to guitar solos now guitar solos are always great on judas priest records i'm not that much into guitar solos myself in general but when it comes to priest i am because they're so superior and they're also infused with so much melody and as great as the leads were on firepower i think invincible shield takes it to a whole new level the solos are much more memorable i think i literally find myself remembering guitar solos which doesn't happen very often it really doesn't yeah there's been so much work lavished again onto these solos richie faulkner has said that you know for the first time he sort of rehearsed a lot of the solos and you know that might have gone the other way that might have made them sound a bit stilted but absolutely not you know they're just gorgeous and lots of great dual guitar melodies yeah invincible shield gets another point taking it even further into the lead at seven to four round 12 the penultimate round concerns a comparison of the lyrics between the two albums i love the lyrics on both albums and I think firepower has a bit more of a preponderance that's a good word isn't it preponderance i don't think i've ever used that before i'm quite pleased with myself yeah it has a preponderance of fantasy lyrics uh you know necromancer evil never dies i mean you know maybe they're kind of allegories to real life events i don't know but uh generally speaking you know flamethrower it's not exactly uh deep and personal stuff and i love that approach i'm absolutely happy with priest's fantasy style lyrics but invincible shield feels like rob is kind of injecting more of himself into it more personal stuff with obviously crown of crown of horns and maybe trial by fire i don't know as god is my witness maybe the lyrics for the title track are just so fantastic they're so kind of so much about metal unity and just power and barricades and words that rob loves saying like consecrate with a roll of the r's oh you can't beat that invincible shield gets the point taking it very much into the lead i wonder who could win this one eh at this point seeing as invincible shield is leading by eight to four. Oh, it's all to play for with this last point and the last point goes to the closing track so that sea of red on firepower versus giants in the sky on invincible shield again i'm not going to hold you in suspense especially after what i said earlier about sea of red giants in the sky gets the point i've really warmed to giants in the sky after initially being a bit disappointed with it as i tend to be with judas priest album closers match ends invincible shield wins nine points to four points over firepower so firepower was a fantastic album and invincible shield it's even better isn't that a wonderful thing now, if you're in the market for an in-depth look at the Invincible Shield album, you'll want to watch this, which is my 28-minute review of the record. And it's not only a review, because I also rank each of the 11 songs on the album from worst to best. So click through and watch that now. Thanks for watching, and please remain possessed by metal.